Compelling evidence of the mega tsunami that was generated by the Burkel Crater impact event exists along every major coastline in the Indian Ocean. This is a segment taken from the full video, which documents the damage, deposition, and evidence left over from this mega tsunami event, starting from Indonesia and going to Sri Lanka, India, Pakistan, Oman, Yemen, Somalia, Madagascar, and finally concluding in South Africa. The link to this can be found in the description below. This is part of a documentary series that also has full videos of the impact this mega tsunami caused to Australia and Antarctica. The links to these will also be found below. If you'd like to see an extended version of this episode made, please click the like button to let me know. I'd be more than happy to dig into this more in depth, if people are keen to see it. So without further ado, let's get into it. Indonesia is a dynamic, ever-changing land, located in one of the most tectonically active regions on the planet. The volcanism here is one of the most extreme as well, and that poses a dilemma that is somewhat unique to Indonesia, at least in this series. The lack of mega tsunami evidence in Indonesia has led to many doubting the Burkle Crater impact theory, but along with the volcanism, another problem is the tropical climate that exists here which means vegetation will be hiding much of the evidence. And that's why this simulator has been by far the most incredible tool to reveal these little guys, because of the accurate topographical data that it has. You wouldn't be able to spot the chevrons I'm about to show you on Google Earth or Google Maps. And the snow function just serves to further highlight the typical V-shape seen in mega tsunami chevron deposition events. When the 180 odd meter high mega tsunami finally reached Indonesia, it would have inundated and scoured these tiny, relatively flat islands as it was passing through, leaving little to no deposition behind. But when it finally reached the main group of islands, well, that was a different story. There's a rise in elevation to around 150 meters high. When the 180 meter high mega tsunami smashed into this place, this sharp elevation would have taken much of the force. Meaning when the mega tsunami leaped over it, the drop in power led to a massive drop in sediment being held by the mega tsunami. And do you see it? They begin to be deposited after the waves smashed into the shorelines before dropping most of the material over here, with the direction that corresponds to the epicenter of the impact event. But did the waves stop here or keep going? Let's see. And as you can probably tell, we've got an issue here that we're going to run into time and time again, especially when we head to India, which has much of the land reshaped for farming. The chevrons, they're gone. The ground's been leveled, but they're not fully gone. I can see very, very faint outlines. So this is it, you probably think. Nope, look at this. Bam, this was big. Some erosion has occurred to the largest of these with rivers passing through them. And after the main deposits, we have smaller ones that slowly taper off. Once upon a time, this entire coastline would have had chevrons dotted all throughout it before being leveled. Now, as previously mentioned, the issue with Indonesia is deciphering what is tsunami related from what is volcanic. The directional nature of these and their shape tells me that whilst there's an interplay between the two, the vast majority of what you see here is mega tsunami related. But yeah, the lushness of Indonesia is the obstacle that has led to many speculating that chevrons don't exist here, but they definitely do. And this is just one spot. The entire shoreline of Indonesia has this occurrence. So this is the end of this video. If you'd like to see the full video, please do check the links down below for either it or the videos on our episodes that cover Australia or Antarctica. Thanks for watching.